boxing when I was 17 at the Taekwondo before that. I couldn't express myself as an athlete, as a person in Taekwondo because there are so many ancient rules and regulations and you have to stick to certain things and you can't dress like the way you want to dress and you can't fight sort of the way you want to fight. It's just everything is so structured. Fighting is something that it comes within you, you know, you gotta be how you are as a person. Your character reflects a lot in your fighting style. So I was supposed to be fighting for GB squad uh, for the Great Britain and the Olympics, but I had an injury, so I couldn't do that. Everything literally was just, it was just not meant to be. I wasn't meant to be doing that. I was meant to start boxing. And then, you know, I just didn't go through the qualifying rounds and, and that's when I stepped into boxing. There's a lot of skills and there's a lot of science and there's a lot of thinking involved in the game that you cannot see if you are not a boxer yourself. All the psychological warfare, all the psychological fights and all the psychological things that goes into the product which is on the night of the fight. It's only a fighter can see that in the trainers, you know, behind closed doors. During the fight you stay focused, of course, because the other guy is gonna fight his fight, you know, he's gonna try to make you do what he wants you to do. It's harder said than done when you're getting hit in the face so hard that you know it hurts. I mean, I mean, you don't feel it at that time, but it does hurt, you know, and to stick to your game plan, it's not easy, so you have to be very disciplined. And you're just so focused, you just block everything, your friends and everything, you become so cold in a way. I mean, that's what happens to me uh, personally. I just literally do not care about anything else. I just want to get in that ring and just show what I can do. I'm Muslim and um, my mom, as soon as it's the day of the fight, she just um, prays from morning that day until my fight is finished and I'm safe. And I call her mom, you know, I'm okay. She hears my voice and then she stops. As a kid, it was my dream to, to be a professional boxer and to, to do what I love and to make a career from it. My current goal is to make an impact on a younger generation, especially where I've come from. You know, I've come from a really underprivileged background. If one person can look at my story and see where I've come from, and I can change their life by them looking at me at mine, I've achieved everything. My name is Coleman Glynn. Uh, I am a family man. I have a, a lovely wife and two daughters. Um, I work. I work in IT. Uh, I do Aikido. I was very intrigued by martial art that aspired to something that was less effective but less violent. As I started Aikido, what really intrigued me was the feeling. The good thing about Aikido, again, is that there's no end to your study. So it's not like your peak is over when you're 24 or 25 or 30, like there is in most sports or even careers. Aikido, there's no end to that. All the good teachers are 70 in their 80s, so all the time you're learning, all the time you can study. My teacher, Hanetsuka Sensei, who is the head of the BAF, is alive still. He's, and I've trained with him since 1987. He's the person I know the most in my life. And we don't talk. We don't have conversations. I've probably said about five words to him in my life. We just practice. Behind the techniques, how you feel, how you relate to people, you know, what you think about it, you can take that to the rest of your day. No one wins in war, no one wins in conflict. No matter how big or how small the conflict, even personally, people will feel bitter. Your work colleagues will always dislike. I want to be happy and peaceful. How? I want to relax. How? So 
what can I do that can help me reach that so I can read? But reading is just words, so mind and body. You imagine after 20, 30 years practicing in something like Aikido, would you be more happy or more content? Probably I am more aware of the moments I'm happy and content and I recognize them more. Um, I can get a very good feeling when I do my Aikido always. I have my own exercises that always make me feel good. Often that's a fuel for doing something. You know, that little sense of there's something else, there's maybe something more, I could be a bit this, just keeps driving you. And then as you do more of this type of thing, as your awareness, I suppose, develops and your self-awareness develops, you have more to work with. You know, it's like, like an onion. You peel off one layer, another layer, another layer, and there's no end to that. You know, so there's always another sense of yourself, another situation, a new personality. It brings up something different in yourself. I aspire to be happy and content, but that's a thing you have to work at. So, 